Alrighty then, it's 2 p.m. and we all know what time it is. It is time for the lunch and learn. And I'm hoping that you're having a fantastic start of the week. Uh, for some people, it's still Monday. For other people, it's already Tuesday. That gives you the reality and perception of what life really is. I see Lucas just tuned in. Thank you so much, man, for tuning in. And Stephen, I've got some great news for you. I, I heard from the guys in Victoria Falls, somebody might want business with you. So let's get to chat a little bit later. Now, guys, like I say, I want to welcome you to this episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we get to talk about how you can start, scale and grow a business with, um, you know, with what you already have. And also where we teach you in the next 30 minutes how to actually earn more money while you're having less struggle using all the online, um, you know, tricks and tricks that uh, you can come up with. OK, so at the end of the day, um, those that know me already, um, my name is Prosper Tarovinga and I'm the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital, um, which is your full scale online digital marketing company based in Melbourne. All right. So every single day we show up like this uh, for 30 minutes and then we're talking about um, everything entrepreneurial, everything mindset, everything to do with productivity and how you can actually start earning more money with less struggle and how we also want you to get the recognition within your industry that you particularly love. OK, so I see Chris has just tuned in. Thank you so much, my love, for tuning in um, today. I actually asked a really uh, sensitive question a little bit earlier on for those that maybe follow me, um, you know, with my posts and everything else. I actually asked a question. Now, I want you to answer it back to me on this live section right now. Um, the question is, do you think attaining financial security for the people you love is materialism? I'm going to ask the question again. Do you think getting financial security for those that you love and care for is materialism? All right. <clears throat> so obviously, as entrepreneurs, I would not want to lie and I would want to testify right now that we live in a very chaotic world. All right. The world is chaotic in the fact that where we are as an entrepreneur, we're stuck in between family friends, the internet, people that we used to know, people that have grown further than us, people that are always telling us what to do, etc., etc. Okay? So, you know, there's always the dictomy or the, um, the, the way of life that there's now the haves and the have-nots. And it's increasingly becoming apparent because of the internet. Way back in the time, people only maybe would congregate at church and you'd only meet the rich people when you see them driving past your house. Or maybe if you're rich, you'd only have to see the poor people when you maybe go to church and then you see their kids uh, not having enough clothes or, you know, repeating the same clothes, etc., etc. But now... All of that is within our reach. We see that in our news feed. We see the people we went to school with actually getting more in life or getting lesser in life, more kids, more cars, whatever floats their boat. All right. We are now exposed to all that have and have not, um, you know, information where it is now a moral obligation for us. Maybe that is actually crippling our success. We feel like the more we attain for ourselves, the more we are going to be looked bad upon by the people that are around us. I'm going to ask you another question again. Is it materialistic just because you want a better car that is safer for your kids? Are you being materialistic just because you want a better house in a better neighborhood so that your kids can go to a better school and you can afford better things for them so that they are happy and you also live, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a more relaxed environment? Are you being mat materialistic if you just have a little bit extra and you can put a pool on your house because you know what? It saves you time to actually go in a pool that's within um, your, your, your walking distance instead of getting stuck in traffic. And after being stuck in traffic, you know, uh, maybe you encounter a, a problem or your kids are not safe in a public pool. 
Is that being materialistic to want to have and be and do things that actually make you feel happy? You know, so if you start thinking of it in this way, because our society is bombarding us every single day that the more you want, the more materialistic you're being perceived. The more you want, the more society is going to judge you. And in such a way, it is actually crippling us without us realizing that, oh, no, if I go in and buy that car, my family is probably not going to want to be, you know, friends with me anymore. Or my friends are not going to want to hang out with me anymore. There's always these uh, statements that, you know, hang out with rich people and your life becomes expensive, etc., etc. All those things that are put out by people that have become lazy, people that have not wanted more in their life, and people that have not wanted to aspire to do and be and have things that will actually make them enjoy life as it's meant to be. Now, which school of thought do you subscribe to? Because materialistic is a matter of attitude. Do you know what I mean? This whole, the, 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 the whole mistake that people are making and thinking that materialistic, being materialistic is, is you know, is a nature of, of, of loving the things that you acquire. But if you really, really look at it, 10 years ago, if you had a flat screen TV, people would think you're materialistic. But right now, I don't know what area you walk around. If you walk on the street, you will find people that have thrown those flat screen TVs. You know why? Because everyone now has one. All right. So if, if you think somebody's being materialistic, just wait 10 years and that thing becomes mainstream. Right now, everybody thinks owning a Tesla is being materialistic. But come in 10 years from today, everybody will be owning an electric car. So think to yourself. Are you crippling your own success just because you are afraid of Sally or James or Peter and what they're going to think of you? Because at the end of the day, all these things that we're doing to ourselves, stopping ourselves from being and doing and having, all those people that are also, you know, you know, growing in their lives, they're not stopping because of you. All right. So half of these things that we cripple ourselves, it's only a matter of the, the, the little, you know, uh, functions or the way that we have actually thought life is supposed to be and we're crippling each other's success. Get out of those networks. Get out of those news feeds that are crippling you from being and doing and having all the things that you want. You know, because people don't actually understand what the definition of materialism really is. Materialism is a state, it's an attitude. We're all going to be acquiring these things. It just depends when your time is on. You know, so now we, we are living in a very chaotic world where, you know, there's now, if you grow any bigger than other people because they're watching you, you know, you, you're now labeled as a, as, a, as a person that has it and you're now labeled as somebody who is not going to be helping other people just because of what, you know, um, the media has told, um, you know, you that materialism is bad. But how many people right now, Bill Gates and all the people that actually do have money are throwing back that money and making sure that everybody, um, you know, acquires it? They, I read somewhere where it says that if all the rich people put back all the money they own, somehow that money will come back to them. You know what? They've got the systems put in place for them to have that money to come back to them. They own the transport. They own the oil. They own everything else. All right. So now look at who is around you that's influencing you or stopping you without you realizing that, you know, when, when you start working real hard, you're going to be, you know, afraid that Sally from next door will think that you're ignoring her because you're doing your work and you're doing whatever you are so that you can help your family. Remember those questions I asked you earlier on. Are you being materialistic if you're wishing a better life for your family? Are you being materialistic if you want a better and safer car for your kids when you're driving them to and from school? Is that being materialistic? Or is it just a crippling belief that society would put on you because if you then drive a fancy car in your neighborhood, people will be like, oh, look at them, they're showing off. 
You know, so you want to now start guarding and looking at the things and the influences that are around you to figure out where do you really want to be and what do you really subscribe to? Because some of these things that are crippling you from actually doing better is the things that you, 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 you secretly approve of. You know, you don't realize that you approve of, of this whole notion that society thinks if you're rich, you're, you're evil. You don't realize that you actually approve of the fact that if somebody has more money than you, then they must have acquired it from stealing or cheating or they, they did something evil. But at the end of the day, what are you doing to, to, to look after your family? What are you doing to look after your kids? What are you doing to look after your legacy? Doesn't that entail you working and being and doing so that you get those things in order for, for you to have a platform to stand on? And when you have a platform to stand on, then you can spread your love. So you need to look at what is it that you're actually, you know, listening to and what is it that you, 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 you're looking at? Because, you know, most people know that when you want to succeed in business, you know, and, and you can afford all the, the leisure, the time and the freedom you actually have to forego your own past and preconceived perceptions. It's not being materialistic to want to look after the people you love. It's not. Because you're doing your best and anybody else wants to be there. But just because they cannot, they want to pull you down so that they can beat you with experience because that's where everybody else is. So don't let, you know, what other people, you know, are, are his thoughts or limiting beliefs cripple you from actually going into work. Because at the end of the day, you might not realize that you, 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 you might be actually afraid of succeeding because you're afraid of what Sally or what Nicole or what Marco is going to think about you. So you need to clear your mind and actually really, really look at, look at it, you know, because I'm talking from a perceptive of somebody who came in from poverty. All right. I, I was born in Zimbabwe, you know what I mean? And, and, and I knew ever since that I was destined for success. But the people that are around me, they've decided to stay the way they are. Even the ones that are here in Melbourne are always trying to bring me down. You know why? Because that's what they know. They have not wanted to upgrade themselves or they have not wanted to do better for themselves. And every move that I make, they think it's a show off. But if I let that get to me, if I let that, you know, cripple me or stop me, are they going to come in one day and feed my daughter? Now, my question to you again is, is it materialistic to want better for your family, to want holidays for your family? Is it materialistic to actually want a safer car that lasts longer so that you don't continuously go in and buy a car every single time? Is it materialistic to want to buy a house in a better neighborhood so you can send your, your kids to, 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 to um, you know, a better school so that they can have a life that's, you know, um, enjoyable? Is that being materialistic? You know, so there's, there's, there's quite a lot of things that are going on around us, in and around our families, in and around the cultures that we're growing up in. I know that for sure, that exactly what I'm talking about is, is, is coming in really, really personal because I've had a lot of people now going in say, oh, Prosper, I think you've succeeded enough. What are you doing for the people back home in Zimbabwe? Oh, Prosper, I think you've succeeded enough. What are you doing for, you know, there's always hungry kids in Africa, etc., etc. And I'm like, cool. Good for them, but they also have the same opportunity that I have. They also have the same opportunity that they can, um, you know, be to and have a life that's worth living. Because at the end of the day, if you're just going to be waiting for other people to, to come in and, 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 and make it good for you, no one is ever going to come and knock on your house's door and say, hey, listen, it's time now. All right. So at the end of the day, in the business environment as well, you really got to guard what influences are coming your way. You really got to guard what sort of mindsets and, 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 and theories that you have in and around money. Because I posted the other day and I was like, what do you think of money? Some people don't know. And the fact that money is treated high up there of things that are scary, people that they don't understand, they just think it's a bad thing to have. You know, in, and in today's entrepreneur, um, you know, journey or the ever-changing business climate, some of these 
preconceived notions or some of these preconceived ideas about money are what are actually crippling you from making it big or being a success in life. You know? You can easily become overwhelmed and then you just let those little, you know, little sayings about money get into you and be like, yeah, it's, it is evil anyway and I don't want to be materialistic so let me just chill and stop working. You know? So you want to be careful and you, you want to be very, very intentional about what you think about money, how you perceive what success is and how you perceive how it is and why, why you're doing what you're doing. Because I could come here and sit down. My job is very, very technical. I'm an SEO consultant, all right? What I do is help people get found on Google. But if I came in every single day and I was talking about SEO, 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 it was not going to be perceived in the way that it has changed a lot of people's lives like this, all right? So so, so my, my, my whole thesis is you gotta vest yourself because once you're a business person, you gotta know all these things. You gotta know why you, you, you feel lazy to go to meet Sally at a meeting because there's no money involved today, but it means you're gonna have money in the future if you maintain that relationship with Sally. Some people don't invest in things like that, you know? Some people don't invest in things that would help them show up and present themselves. You know why? Because they don't want to appear materialistic because of the way they look, the car they drive, etc., etc. And that's why people get overwhelmed and they always want to, to think that things are not working, but it's the way they think about life. Even in the Bible, God was there, he was looking at the world and he was pleased because everything in it was good. And everything in it included money. It included all the rich things. There was rich people from Babylon. Even Jesus was given rich and expensive gifts. So why not you? Why not you receive the goodness and the abundance of what the world has to offer? It's the way you think about money that is crippling your success right now. It's crippling the way your business is going to grow. It's going to cripple the relationships you're going to have with people. I'm going to keep asking this question again. Is it materialistic to want a better life for your kids? Is it materialistic to want a better holiday for you and your spouse? Is it materialistic to want a better car that would transport your kids from school in a safer, you know, environment so that, you know, you, anything that you might think of buying. All right. So you really got to be focused on what your why is. And really clear your conscience and your mindset about your values around money, around people, relationships, and all those things that will bring together a business. You know, sometimes people think you just need a strategy, but it's just a small switch like today. Just something like this could actually make or break a $100 million business. Your thoughts about money, your thoughts about environment, your thoughts about who you need to connect with, your thoughts about how to connect with those people. It's not a matter of a trick or like some sort of software or some sort of plug and play thing. It's you, the star player. What do you think? How do you actually perceive your stance in society and your perception of where you're going to be? Because all we want, right, is, is, is the holidays, is the, is the good time, is the fine cars, is the freedom, all those things. But if your mindset is not in tune and aligned to those things, you will never get there. You know, I could come here and give you all the tricks and tips, but if your mindset is not in the place for you to actually utilize them and work harder, because right now, after you've heard this, you're actually going to go to work because now you're no longer afraid of winning. Now you're no longer afraid of succeeding because maybe the thing that was holding you back is because the Joneses haven't bought that new Jeep yet, so I can't go in and buy that Jeep because then people will think I'm showing off. You know? So you, you can't, you know, let the, di the dichotomy of society detect where you're going to end up, all the things that you're going to accomplish just because Sally hasn't arrived there yet. Or your parents, just because they didn't do that and they're going to tell you not to do certain things just because, you know, they are afraid of their own humiliation that you're going to be better than them. 
Yeah. So my question still remains. Is it being materialistic to want to, 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 to look after your family and have the good things that your family actually want? Is it being materialistic? You know? So there's people that are, you know, searching for all this riches and glory, depending on what it is that has been brought up to them, um, you know, um, or what TV or whoever has shown to them, you know? What usually happens is when a person has dreamed of greener pastures and, you know, reaches beyond their wildest dreams, they become so amazed in the problem after that. It actually removes them from building a business because now they know that more money, more problems, and they don't want that. It's just the way you think about small things. It's, it's, today's topic might be all over the place, but you are not being materialistic when you're chasing your goals. You're not being materialistic when you're chasing your dreams. You're not being materialistic when you're going after what it is that you, 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 you're good at. Because these people would always try and pull you down and then bring you back to their level because that's all they know. What you're trying to do right now, nobody has ever tried to do it. You know why? Because your name was not written on what they tried to do prior. You were made from something different. All right. So if you want to create a business from long term, it's small switches that you've got to do. Just like today. I did not really prepare about this topic or whatever it is, but I, I just fumbled upon this and then I was just thinking, it's small things that would stop you, you know? Just the one word, not understanding what materialism actually means would actually cripple you from being productive, would actually cripple you from reaching out to people that can help you with, with business. You know? It's either the people you're around, the environment you're around, Maybe if it's not a good one that, that harbors or that incub incubates success, you want to move away from that. I moved. I just didn't move suburbs or countries. I moved continents just so that I could get away from all the bull crap. I'm not saying home is, but then the situation around when I left was not the best. Right. So clearly, as long a lot of people start off and they want huge success in their business, but nobody, not a lot of people get there because of just teeny weeny mindsets. When your friends are going to start thinking that, oh, you're not hanging out with them anymore because you're busy updating your blog. They don't realize that, yes, you're not making money today, but it will compound. It will make sense tomorrow. Yeah, so small shifts. It's not a $3,000 course that's going to make you have a whole big aha moment. Just a small shift. You are not being materialistic if you're chasing your goals. You're not being materialistic if you're actually going forward to look after the people that you love. You're not being materialistic by wanting a better car that will make sure that you are safer on the roads. Can you imagine if your car breaks down in the middle of the highway, how many people would you put at danger just because you were trying not to be materialistic? Now, is that helping anyone? Is that saving people's lives? You know, you might want to live in a crappy, dilapidated house that's, you know, you know, it has... I don't know, crickets, and here in Australia, there's spiders, and whenever a house is old, it starts accumulating things, spiders, snakes, and all that stuff. And would you put your family in danger just because you don't want to appear materialistic? You know? So a lot of things separate, um, you know, the so-called winners and the rest of the people, you know? And that's why maybe... 8 out of 10 businesses fail in that first 18 months of operation. Because when you get your first paycheck, you're like, oh my God, this is money. Oh, whoa, whoa, let's stop it. Let's stop it. Uh, I might lose friends. I might lose uh, relatives. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want that. Yeah. And then that small thing is actually going to cripple you the whole way of your business. You know? 
So, you know, and, and then as, as, as the, the more you go, the more people want to, you to be responsible for them. And you're like, oh, snap, people might think I'm being materialistic. No, because you want to go from Sydney to Melbourne in a private jet. It's faster. It's more convenient because you've got more purpose and more value to deliver in less amount of time. It's not being materialistic. So I'm here today to tell you that you are actually doing yourself a disservice by not plugging into the abundance that the world has to offer just because you're thinking small and because of the people that are around you that are limiting your beliefs, limiting your growth and actually stealing from you just because they cannot do it themselves. Can you imagine if, 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 if you, you stop listening to those people and then you become maybe a millionaire and, and, and then look back and say, oh, if I didn't listen to those people, or if you then listen to those people and you're struggling the rest of your life, all right, those people have stolen that from you, you know? And then Vanessa says, I was brought up with the mantra that money is the root of all evil. It's taken a long time to get rid of that attitude to money. Well, if you really want to know what money is the root of all evil, is the biggest misconception about money ever. All right? Because the, the, that verse in the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. All right? And it's not just money in, in, and, it, in and of itself. It's the love of money. All right. So at the end of the day, there's a lot of people. Yes, I love that. Vanessa, dream stealers. Dream stealers. All these people, just because they cannot reach those heights, just because they cannot do, be and have all those things, they're going to try and beat you down and leave you down there and laugh at you even. Everybody's always out there to do what makes them happy. Everybody's always looking out for their own self. Have you ever taken a photo with people, maybe four or five people, and, and showed them the photo after you've taken it? Have you noticed that everybody just looks at their own self in the picture? If they're looking good in that picture, they say it's a good one. If they're not, they want it to be taken again. Have you ever noticed that? So that's what life is like. People are just looking out for themselves. So all those people that are telling you, oh, be careful, don't do that, don't take any more risk, etc., etc., they're just doing that because they don't want their habits around you to change. You know? Because then they used to call you anytime they felt like and tell you they're gunk. Now they cannot because you're busy. And that, that annoys them. They don't want that. They don't want to have to jump through hoops or change their habits around people. You know why? Because those people are doing better in their lives. All right? So at the end of the day, it's just one of those things. Some people are born with, with it and some people will just take on, you know, mantras and values of those that are around them. That also can be changed. All right? Make sure you're giving out value because... The more value you, you give out, the more value you're going to get in return. And you deserve that. So feel, don't feel any guilt and you actually showcasing and living a life that's comfortable and enjoyable just because you don't want the people around you to feel bad. They never come to your house when they do good, do they? So stop crippling your success just because you want to fit in. You know, I used to try so hard to fit in, but then, you know, I realized all those people, they're also trying to get somewhere, you know? So I'm going to ask you this question, guys, all right? I really, really want you to think about this in a way that will change your mindset, yeah? Are you being materialistic if you want a better life for your family? Are you being materialistic if you want a better house in a better neighborhood just so you could raise your kids up good? Are you being materialistic if you're going to want a car that is safe and is safer for the whole environment and for everybody else around you? Because if you've got a, you, a ancient car that breaks down all the time, you are a hazard to other people that are coming down the road or around the bend when your car is just stopping in the middle there. So what good are you to society if you're not actually doing things that will help you be, do, and have a life and a business that's profitable and enjoyable? 
Guys, I, I really want you to win. And today's topic might have gone all over the place, but it was just one question. You are not being materialistic by wanting to achieve your goals. You're not being materialistic by wanting to achieve your why. Because that's the whole reason why we're here, to not to just fall through and, and, and be blanketed in and around what society expects of us. All right. So if your mission helps you to be on a platform that people would actually respect, because people only respect success, you know, and, 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 and the, the one thing again is when you find people telling you to stop, you haven't succeeded yet. So keep working because people won't tell you if you've got billions that, ah, dude, come on, don't buy that yacht. No, they'll say buy that yacht so that they can come and play with you. So if you find people actually telling you, ah, stop it, maybe you're not working hard enough. You're not working hard enough. So that should be a sign now whenever people are telling you, oh, I think you're, you're being overzealous, you haven't worked hard enough. Because nobody would go and knock on Bill Gates' door and say, hey, Mr. Bill Gates, uh, stop, stop making more Microsoft products. I think, I think you've had enough. It's not like that, all right? So at the end of the day, I don't know if I did well in this uh, topic today. Just let me know in the comments below. Just find ways that you can actually contribute to life because the poorer you are, the less helpful you can be, all right? It doesn't have to be money. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, material possessions or whatever it is. It's the way and the attitude you have about them, all right? So the more you acquire the more success you have, the more time you have to do good up uh, upon the world, all right? So you're not being materialistic if you're out there looking after your family. You're not being materialistic if you're out there looking after the benefits of other people so you can help them because you can never help other people if you're poor, all right? So just find ways that you can help those that are less fortunate and give back a little bit to society, whichever way you can, because that's not being materialistic. That's actually being helpful. And that is what will make you feel great, do well, and you actually start attracting the things that you like in your time. And simply, guys, that's how the world works. In any case, guys, I'm overdue today. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. And don't forget to be awesome. You are not being materialistic if you're chasing your goals, if you're chasing your dreams. I want us to continue this conversation in, in the comments below. Let me know what you're going to do for the rest of 2017. You know why? Because I got you.